Welcome. In the previous video, we derived the expressions for the first order correction to the energy levels, as well as the first order correction for the wave functions. Now, in this video, we will derive the second order correction for the energy levels. The second order correction for the wave function is not something that interests us when we are using the current method of perturbation theory. We will discuss such things later when we deal with other methods. So for now, let's just focus on getting the second order correction to the energy levels. Now we are going to start off with this expression right here, which we derived in the previous video. So if you don't know where this came from, make sure to check out the previous video in the playlist. All right. So just as we did in the previous time, we have to identify what we want to accomplish here. We want to find this part right here, EN2, the second order correction for the energy levels. And it is accompanied right now by this Psi N0, the unperturbed wave function. So in order to get rid of it, just as we did before, we're going to multiply from the left by the complex conjugate of the unperturbed wave function and we're going to integrate, right? Which is basically, we're going to do the inner product of this Psi N0 with itself, basically, right? We're going to get the bracket of Psi N0, Psi N0. So let's do it just as we did the previous time. So here we get Psi N0, the unperturbed Hamiltonian and Psi N2. Now, just as we did in the previous time here, we can use the fact that the Hamiltonian is Hermitian. So we can write it inside of the bra like this, like acting on this Psi N0. And the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function is simply the energy acting on the wave function. But the energy is simply a number. So we can pull it out of the integral, right, of this bra. So this is just going to be reduced to the bra of psi n0 ket psi n2. All right, that's the first term. Now the second one, we're going to have psi n0 h prime psi n1. And this is going to be equal to, let's see, well, now we're going to have the bra of psi n0 ket of psi n2, and we have the a the energy levels of the unperturbed system, which is of course just a number, so we can pull it out. So we get this right here. And you can notice already that it is exactly the same that we have on the left hand side. So these two will actually just cancel each other out. Now we have this term right here. Let's continue with this one. That one is going to be E n1 then psi n0, ps, whoop, that does not look like an n, psi n1, and finally e n2. I'm just pulling it out immediately now since we have explained it quite a few times already. All right, and this part here is of course uh, one since we are dealing with orthonormal states, and right here it's at the inner product of the same state. So this is just going to be one since it is normalized. And as happened in the previous video, we are now left with an isolated EN2, which is exactly what we want, because that is precisely the part that we want to find. So let us now write it all by itself. So EN2, this is going to be, well, this part right here. So Psi N0, Hamiltonian of this perturbation, Psi N1 minus E N1, Psi N0, Psi N1. Okay, so let us now take a look at this. Well, what exactly are all of these things? This part right here, it includes this Psi N1, which is the first order correction to the wave function, but that is exactly what we found in the previous video, right? So what was it? We found that Psi N1 was going to be a linear combination where N had to be different from M of CMN times Psi M0, right? Because we, well, we explained it there, 
but we knew that the unperturbed wave functions formed a complete set so we could use these as a basis to write or to expand uh, our uh, these this first order correction so let's plug this into this part right here so what we would get is the sum right and different from m cm n and psi m zero and let me just delete this part right here since we already used it okay and we can pull now the sum outside and what we have is psi n zero bra oh my tablet is lagging sorry what was that let's see if it's fixed psi n oh that's weird zero psi m zero and this i know it's hard to read this is psi n zero psi m zero and since n and m have to be different and these are orthonormal states this means that this part is going to be zero so this entire term right here is now zero all right and we are left with this part right here and here once again we have psi n1 so let's once again put in here our expression for the first order correction to the wave function so what is that going to be it's going to be well let me write the sum outside immediately since we already uh, used it we know what it is c m n and then psi n zero h prime psi m uh, zero all right and this is in principle correct and done but it's better if we also replace the expression that we found for the coefficients right we found them in the previous video so let's just put them in there so this is going to be the sum of n different from m and what was this expression this expression actually was precisely the same than what we have right here but divided by the differences in the energies so it was psi n zero h prime psi m zero divided by e n zero minus e m zero and this is now multiplied by this part right here so we can just write it as this squared all right and this is the expression for the second order correction to the energy levels in non-degenerate time independent perturbation theory all right so i hope that this was clear if not you can let me know in the comments if there was anything that you would like me to explain and i will see you in the next video thank you very much